what's happening, guys? Yeah, yeah, I know. I got the graph paper out. We're going to start talking about something a little bit deeper, and that is the characterization of transistors. Now, we've talked about transistors before and how they work. And basically, the main action of a transistor is it allows a collector current that is much larger than the base current. That's called the transistor action. So, you know, if we have our basic NPN transistor here, this is our collector, our emitter, and our base. And just say, just for shits and giggles, we put in uh, 10 microamp base current, and this yields us, say, a hundred microamp collector current. That is the transistor action. Now, what we want to know in the characterization uh, of the transistor is how do these two things correspond to each other across the range of the transistor when it's in its linear region. Now, what we have to, to understand is this ratio, and that is the amplification is equal to IC over IB. So it is the collector current divided by the base current. That's our amplification. And this range is typically, and I'm saying typically because, uh, whoops, <laughs> it can be different between 100 and 300 times. So 100 to 300 times. That's your standard for, like, say, a 2222 transistor. Now, the base current, we like to say, controls the collector current, since the size of the base current determines the size of the collector current. And it, it follows that equation. So, if I be, if our base current is equal to zero, well, then our collector current must also be equal to zero. Okay, I mean, that makes sense, right? So, one of the things that we want to do is measuring the characteristics. And there are a lot of ways to do that. Um, industrial use what's called a source measurement unit. Usually use two source measurement units, which are expensive pieces of equipment. But, I mean, really, what do we need to know to do this? We said a bipolar transistor has three terminals, the base, the collector, and the emitter. So what we would want is a graph of base current and a current into the base, current out of the emitter, and current into the collector. Uh, conservation of charges, and that's going to be IB plus IC equals IE. Of course, we're talking uh, Kirchhoff's current law there. We need to measure only two currents, and the other will be determined from this equation. So it gets pretty simple. Actually, the base current is you know, really quite small compared with the other currents. And as a good approximation, we can say that IC will equal IE. Mm, sort of. Just kind of keep that in mind. Now, also involved are the voltages that we need. So we have VCE, which is our collector emitter voltage. We have VCB, which is our collector base voltage. And we have VBE, which is our base emitter voltage. And that's the one that we know, since it is a silicon junction, is going to be about 0.7 of a volt. Now, you can measure these using your DMM, and that's what's nice, is it, like I said, we normally, industrially, we use a couple of source measurement units, but with three multimeters, you can do your own transistor characterizations at home. 
So we need to measure the bait. We need to make sure that the base emitter junction is biased in the forward direction, so that only the intrinsic voltage drop across the PN junction appears, which is that 0.7 volts. We don't want anything else. Okay. So then we have our conservation of potentials, which is V C B. Whoops. Plus V B E equals V C. E. That's a C. I know I don't write very well. So remember, here we have this formula, also this formula, and together they're going to allow us to do this. Again, we only need to measure two things because if we take V, C, B, our collector base voltage, plus 0 0.7, which is our base emitter voltage, it is going to enter V, C, E our collector emitter voltage. That's that conservation of potentials. So now what we can do is we can set up a simple circuit like this. Let's take a battery or some sort of power source and we'll go to our first ammeter to a variable resistor and that is going to go into the base of our transistor that we want to characterize. Then we want to come off here with another ammeter and we'll go with a fixed resistor of say 1k here Oops, that's into our collector and then our emitter is going to go to ground and we also want to measure right here our <coughs> excuse me our collector emitter voltage about the cough so keeping all that in mind the next thing we want to do is we want to set up a little graph and we have RB IB IC and VCE so this will be our our characterization graph now, I've done this with a 2N2222 transistor. If you do it with something different, your results are going to be different. So, we start out with 1 mega ohm. At least, I started out with 1 mega ohm. And we get 9 microamps of base current. And we get 0.9 milliamps of collector current and 8.1 volts DC. Um, we're doing this at 9 volts by the way. 9 volts DC. Okay. Then we drop down to uh, 680 kilo ohms which gave me 13 microamps base current 1.3 milliamp collector current and 7.7 .7 VDC. Next I did 470 kilo ohms which gave me about 19 microamps collector current 1.9 milliamps I'm sorry <laughs> nine, <laughs> can't talk 19 microamps of base current 1.9 milliamps of collector current and 7.1 volts of collector emitter voltage. Then I went down to 330, this is the last one I'm going to do, 330 which gave me 27.3 microamps of base current, uh, 2.8 milliamp collector current and 6.2 volts DC of our collector emitter voltage. Now, once we have all of that put together, what we can do is we can draw a graph. Here we have IB, which is microamps. Here we have IC, which is milliamp. And then when we plot our points, they come out something like that. 
Now, the data tends to fall on a straight line because regardless of VCE, the slope of the line is simply the amplification of the transistor, or we can say uh, amplification equals delta IC over delta IB, or the amplification equals IC over IB. Since one data point can be used for the other, it's okay, it's the transistor equation and we use it a lot. So that is a, a basic introduction to how you can characterize transistors yourself at home. Um, again, we use 9 volts. Use a uh, 2 ammeters, 1 volt meter. You don't need thousands of dollars in equipment. So, if you want to see how I did this, and here is actually here's actually the circuit that I used. This is my this is my current source here. There's my 1K. Then I just grabbed some meters and went to town. But you know, if you would like a demonstration of that. Let me know. We can certainly roll that out for you guys. But I didn't want to get too deep into it. If nobody's interested, let me know what you like. All right? All right. That's it. I'm out. Peace.